Should I start from the beginning? Okay, I will. Good evening, Hope Community Church. We want to thank you so much for tuning in to our Wednesday live stream. Thank you guys so much for being part of our Hope at Home service. We are thankful for everyone who is showing up on Sundays in person, but we are so thankful for everyone who is continuing to tune in to our Wednesday live streams. Uh, it just shows us that you guys cannot get enough of God's word, and we are thankful for that, that we can be brothers and sisters in Christ, encouraging each other with God's word even halfway through the week. Amen. So we're thankful for you guys for tuning in. Whoa, it just got spiritual too because I got keys behind me for the opener. Wow, I like doing the announcements on stage now. Um, anyways, I just wanted to say, like I said, thank you so much. Give someone a virtual hug. Give someone a virtual comment just saying like, I'm so thankful to see you guys here. Say hi to someone in the comments below. And then this is a great way for you to have the opportunity to share the gospel with someone who may be is not tuning into a Wednesday service. Maybe they don't plan on going to church at all this week. You can share this live stream on your feed and it might catch someone's attention so that they hear a little bit of the gospel. So we encourage you guys to share it onto your feed, share this for other people to see. Um, that would be a huge blessing, not only for our church to minister the gospel, but it's going to be a blessing to your friends and your family who, like I said, might not have planned on tuning in, but it, you never know they might just click on it and hear a little bit of the gospel so we would love for you guys to share this live stream um and then last but not least we want to say thank you for continuing to give continuing to show support in the midst of everything going on uh there's a couple different ways that you can continue to support us you can text the number on your screen right now in order to set up a text to give donation you just text that number it'll set it up electronically you can also go to our website at www.discoverhope.us go to the giving section and that'll hook it up to your credit card or your paypal that's how i give online it's super easy and convenient and then last but not least you can come join us in person this sunday at 9 a.m we would love to see you here we will put the offering buckets by during the time of offering you can drop your offering in person if you would like but that is an open invitation for you guys to come back to church in person at 9 a.m this sunday and we would love to have you with us amen all right we're gonna get into a great time of worship and praise i want to encourage you guys to to honestly get into an atmosphere of praising god the same way you would do on Sunday in person, amen? So maybe stand up in your living room, maybe stand up in your bedroom, wherever you're watching right now, we encourage you guys to engage in worship, amen? With that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to the Hope Band. Yeah, Jesus. I have to say nothing more. She's already encouraged you guys. You guys are ready to go, amen? Amen? You guys are ready to go after that, huh? All right, let's get into it.
over the water, the spirit come move over us. Over the water, spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come on, I feel the fire. Come on. Our lives for 
Do that one more time. Come on, church. Your love, it burns inside. Our hearts are satisfied by you. Jesus, oh Jesus. Your love is our reward. That's why we ask for more of you.
Father, we just thank you for this encounter we've had with you. We thank you, Lord, that your love is like no other. I thank you, Lord, that you have a power like no other. I thank you, Lord, that you are changing us from the inside out. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You are amazing. You are amazing, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your precious, precious, beautiful presence with us. And I just pray right now that we would just have a heart ready to receive your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. Let's welcome up Carlos. Amen. amen. Happy Wednesday, Hope Community Church. I'm so glad you guys tuning in this Wednesday. It's a beautiful day. And aren't we, aren't we, I mean, we, sh we should be thankful that God loves us, man. You know, I love, I love God because he teaches me all the time. I mean, you know, I, I got, I got slapped around by the Holy Spirit. I was, I was walking in, in like dislike, uh, cause I'm a Dodger fan, right? And I don't like to, I don't like to lose. I don't like to lose, but the Lord, he slapped me around cause I was reading first Corinthians chapter 13 and talks about love you know if, if, if you if you have the if you have the the gifts of tongues prophecy healing giving to the poor I'm prophesizing I mean I'm paraphrasing I'm saying not prophesying and um you know but you don't have love then we don't have nothing and there I am tearing down Jansen our clothes because he's not doing a, he's not doing good but I mean I get wild up and the Lord told me why don't you lift him up man and I and, and you know and it's true because why am I gonna put him down I should lift him up you know because I mean God is love he's a he's a creator and founder of love you know and, and if God loves me I I gotta love my neighbor like it says you know that shall love God our Lord with all our heart right and also love our, our neighbor so he convicted me. And, and a lot of times, um, I, there's two types of questions that I consider 
good and bad. One is a, an honest question. If you ask somebody an honest question, you, you, you're, you're seeking a, a, an answer. But, it, but if you're asking someone a dishonest question, you're seeking an argument. You're seeking an argument because I would, if I see a guy with a Houston Nationals hat, I'll say, hey, what team do you like? I'm already, I already know the answer. I'm just looking for an argument. You know, and God told me that, hey, man, you got to cut that off straight up. Just boom, boom. I mean, uh, this, this um, dishonest question is something you're just asking somebody because you want to create an argument. It's not good. God, God didn't make us like that. God make us, made us to walk in love. Amen. I remember when I was in the streets, I was never walking in love. I was walking in hatred and, you know, just looking, saying, hey, what's up? <laughs> Telling the homies, what's up? Nobody knew what, what's up. What's up, homies? What's up? What's up? What's up? Nobody knows what's up. Amen? Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Nobody knows what's up. <laughs> That's crazy, you know? But thank God that we can walk in his love and he teaches us. Amen? Okay, now I got I got a joke. I get, it's, it's funny. I think it's funny. Okay, why was the chicken scared to cross the street to the other side? Because Pollo Loco was on the other side. Okay, they got it. <laughs> okay, so if you have your sword, put it over your head and say, this is my Bible. I could have what it says I could have. I can do what it says I could do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm ready to receive the word of God. And having received the word of God, I will do the word of God. And we got a great word from Pastor Paul. He's, he's anointed by the Lord. Amen. Pastor Paul. Oh, wow. I love that. I love Carlos, man. It brings so much positive energy. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, glory for the celebration um, of just being in your presence and being able to just enjoy you, to be able to enjoy the family of God that's here. And we pray for that soon we'll be able to be completely together and um, that you just are doing a mighty work. And we pray also for, for uh, that you bring more people into our family. Um, we, we don't know who, who we have yet to meet who's in darkness right now, who needs you. We pray that you would touch them right now. We pray, we pray that you would work in their hearts right now, work in them to recognize that you are the author of every good thing, to, to turn to you, to give you glory, to give you thanks. Come on, join me in interceding right now for the lost because, man, what a, what, a, what a paradox. We have so much joy. We have so much freedom. We have so much of a bright future. I mean, the Bible, you said, Lord, that our future is, the glory of our future is like the, uh, looking into the stars and seeing the, shine, the, the, the stars get sh more and more shiny. And that's our future shinier and shinier and shinier. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would help us tonight to live life well, to honor you with the things that we do in our daily lives so that people will be drawn to our light, that we would not hide it under a bushel. I pray for myself because that's the only person that I can control, but I also pray for the influence of the Holy Spirit to minister to people tonight. And we give you the glory. We thank you that you started a good work in us, Jesus. But you're not just the author of our faith. You are also the finisher. So we give you glory. Come on, give Jesus glory right now. We love you, Lord. Amen, amen. You guys like my hat? Pastor Drew, you like my hat? Wherever. He, I know, he's watching. Oh, <laughs> he used to be over there, right? Yeah, Pastor Drew. Yeah, world champions. Amen. Amen. Good to see you guys in the house of God. And I can't see you. I'm so glad that you're here watching or later on watching. Um, we're going to have a good time. We're already having a great time. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Angel, and all the, the worship team. And you guys just did a great job. Just really, really cool. You can, you can tell when, when people have done the work, when things just kind of flow um, seamlessly. 
And I mean, I just love, that was so cool how you tied in those songs. I think you did that, right? Because I, I don't remember the, the burning ones having that ending. That was rad. As I would say when I was a kid, that was rad. <laughs> yes, all right. Tonight, I just want to talk for a little bit, and I'd, I'd love to get into more worship. Um, but I've said that before, and then I talk long, and it doesn't happen, so don't hold your breath. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't want to talk long. I don't, I just, you know, some, you know, sometimes God, I mean, the word is the word, right? It's so important. It's so crucial. But do you know God can speak his word during worship, and it's just such an openness when our hearts, and I can feel it in this room. Thank you, everybody else, for entering in, because, like, I just love to praise God, and it's not the same alone. I mean, I can enter the presence of God because Jesus made a way, but there's something about corporate. You know, as I was kind of preparing and searching my heart and studying the last, you know, several days and everything for like, God, what do you want? And really what I want to talk about today is like, what are my takeaways from from this last season of 2020, um, you know, the, 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 the season that we've all been through, but we all have our own story, our own journey. Um, and, 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 and I just think about just the communal aspect. Like I want, I miss community. I miss you guys. I mean, I'm, I miss knowing people and build relation. I mean, those things like I would go day after day at you guys. If you know me, you know, I love my dogs. Okay. And I have some amazing dogs. All right. Buddy and hope. Pastor Drew. Pastor Vegas loves Buddy, and Pastor Drew loves Hope because of her name, and she just is drawn to him. Anyway, so um, they're great dogs, but imagine they're your own only contact day after day after day after day, <laughs> and and like my only time out of the house would be like walking them. You know what I mean? Hey, you guys want to? You guys ever seen any of those memes? Like the dogs are like, okay, you already walked us in three times this, you know, today. That's enough. You know, early on in the. They're at the stay at home kind of closure and stuff. So anyway, tonight I want to talk about, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the, uh, the toilet paper crisis of 2020. <laughs> All right. I'm glad Do you have that picture. I want to talk about perspective a little bit tonight. All right. I hope the people at, at home are going to be able to see it, but I have a picture. You guys know that a picture says a thousand words, and uh, this one says like at least twelve hundred words. Okay, right there, there is a picture. Look at the glee in that man's face. He's got a real joy. Why does he have so much joy? Because he got a, a case of toilet paper. This happened on March seventeenth, two thousand twenty. I should I should have put that on there because that's perspective. That's perspective. Right? I mean, I, and, and the funny thing was, I didn't even really need no toilet paper. I was just like, everyone's like, I can't find toilet paper. I can't find toilet paper. Can you find toilet paper? And I was like, ah, what am I going to do if I run out of toilet paper? Well, I already mentioned that I live alone with two dogs, and they don't use toilet paper, right? And I, I, learned, I learned the hard way, like, you know what? It did last a lot longer than I thought. Maybe I, could, I, get, I got caught up a little bit in the hype. But anyway, that, can you guys keep it up there? I like that picture. That was a joyful day. So I, I hit up, I don't know if you guys are allowed to or not, you know, copyright. Well, it's my picture. Anyway, um, yeah, so I hit up um, the, uh, Anthony and Dolores. I said, there's no toilet paper at my Costco. Can I go to your Sam's Club? And they were like, let's go. So we made a run to Sam's Club, and we were there, and they brought out a big old pallet, and there was a big long line, like almost half, half of the store. Anyway, perspective is... Um, I wanted to find perspective because that that picture does need perspective, right? Like I had, um, I won't say anybody's name, um, but Pastor Tamara was saying, oh, wait, did I say that loud? <laughs> no, Pastor Tamara said, because um, her birthday is March 19th, right, two days after that. So I, I was just like, you know what? Can I have some toilet paper for my birthday? I never thought I would ask that. I never thought I would ask this, but I was on the phone with her. I'm like, I found a, I found a, you know, some toilet paper. Do you want some? She's like, yeah, give it to me for my birthday. You know, it was just, I mean, who would ever say that? You know, can you imagine a one-year-old, two-year-old, any-year-old say, I want toilet paper for my birthday. Um, but perspective is the capacity to view things in their true relations 
or relative import, importance. Um, the capacity to view things in their true relations or relative importance. So I just, you know, I was joking with Pastor Shayla. I don't know if it was right before uh, um, 2020 or right in the beginning days, but I, I remember leaning in. We had a service somewhere. I don't remember the details, but I said, I kind of made a joke. Uh, how many people are going to prophesy 2020 vision this year? 2020 vision, 2020 vision, right? I'm like, it's just a setup. And I don't, I don't mean to belittle that or whatever. It's kind of like that's because the reality was, and then as the, as the year went on, and I remember, I remember I, I, I had a bunch, of, um, a bunch of friends, Christian friends, and I went on uh, Marco Polo. It was a group of about 12 guys, and I said, what are you guys expecting for 2020, you know, with all this, like, jovial, like, excitement and youthful optimism? Because I have a youthful heart, right? And I just thought, yeah, thank you. I'm like, yeah, I just, what's, what's going to happen? But the reality was I had a real naivety. Like, I thought I was in a lot more control of things than I was. Oh, my goodness, 2020, like, really taught me some things. Because I would love to sit here and tell you, let me tell you how I overcame every single day in 2020, and that's not the story. Like, there were days when I was felt super lonely. There were days when I felt super fearful. Days when I just, I mean, I was losing hope for, and, and, I, and maybe I'm not alone, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure I'm not, uh, because I know a lot of people, um, you know, were looking for answers. It's, it was really a trying time. So I just want to, I just kind of want to share a little bit um, tonight, just a couple takeaways um, from my time. It's not, probably not going to be anything new um, for you, but um, it may be something that you're not walking in because I know this is for me too. Like, um, it's, it's not really a matter of, you know, what I know, it's a matter of what I'm doing. Can I get an amen? amen. It's, very, it's very important. And so I am, I just want to share out of my own heart. Um, and, I, and some of it I do need to give uh, some of the things that um, Bill Johnson from Bethel was, was saying that he felt were some, key, were some keys. And there were things that I kind of have been learning and really want to put into practice in, in an increasing way. And by the way, this is going to be interactive. So get ready. All right, get ready. Keep your praise on. Because you guys know when, you know, at home, I know it might sometimes it's a little bit different at home, but it's okay because God's there too. And, and even in the service, and sometimes we get into this mode of like, okay, worship, now it's time for the word. I mean, it's all God's spirit. He's moving right now. He was moving in worship. He'll move, in, you know what I mean? He's just, so we need to keep our hearts engaged. I think sometimes um, I, we can have a different mindset, you know what I mean? And it can maybe hinder, you know, like Pastor Drew teaches us, you know, the word of God is not, um, is not hindered, but, but when we have traditions, when we have, it's really kind of like according to our faith, be it, be it done unto us. When we believe that, oh, God can only do this at that time during a service, then that's what we're going to get. So in other words, have expectation, right? Have expectation tonight. Amen. Uh, because the first thing I wanted to say was um, the key to, I want to talk about health. I want to talk about health because I feel like we're in this new, I don't know about you, but I feel like, you know, I was kind of learning how to live a whole new existence, a whole new life with me and my dogs, you know, and I would go on Zoom and I'd teach my students and, and maybe I would dare to make a run for the grocery store or, you know what I mean, whatever it happened to be. And I'm finding myself now as um, things are different, right? Even, you know, um, civil authorities are saying that things are different. And um, I'm finding myself maybe conditioned a little bit, limiting myself, possibly. Like, am I limiting myself and, res and, and when God wants me to be more free than I'm acting? In my mind and my heart and my relationships and my, you know, fill in the blank. Like what, what does freedom look like? He died to set us free, right? For freedom, he's, he, 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 he set us free. And so, um, so health is the name of the game, right? And when I say health, I'm not even going to really touch much on body health, right? Um, 
It's crucial, right? Because we only get one body. But uh, the first thing I want to say was the key to mental health is giving thanks in everything. Giving thanks in everything. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and can you guys put up the First Thessalonians verse? And this is this verse is going to be is um, really kind of sums up what I want to talk about. And um, the first thing it says is rejoice always. Uh, I love this. This is like they're short, little, cute little verses that have a lot to say, right? Seventeen. Pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Have you ever wondered if you're in the will of God? And, and and yet, guess what? If I'm giving thanks in that moment, my heart is grateful. Like I don't deserve this. I thought I could control it. I thought I deserved it. But I was wrong. I don't deserve it. I don't want what I deserve. Um, guess what? The, res the corresponding response would be thankfulness, right? And in that moment, I'm in the will of God. Like when we're worshiping, did you guys get that sense? Don't you get that sense? Like I'm worshiping God. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Like, this is it. This is the culmination of life. This is joy unspeakable. And that's just a little tiny glimpse. You know what I mean? It's a little tiny release of God's freedom, of God's coolness, of God's nature. When we, like, step into his presence, his pre and his presence is fullness of joy, and his presence is freedom. And I don't know, I'm just... God's really been working um, an increased hunger, an increased passion for, for more. You know what I mean? For more. And I think it even starts with, like, uh, I don't deserve it. Um, I don't, de like, because it's so easy. I guess the reason I wanted to find perspective is because, you know, I've been, look I've been looking a lot at happy. What does it mean to be happy? You know, Paul stood before King Agrippa, right, who had the power to, like, have him, you know, eaten up by, you know, lions or whatever. And he says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa. And he says, I wish you would be exactly like me, except for these chains. Right? He says in Acts 26, I think. Um, Paul, like, there, he didn't, what do, what do I think will make me happy in life? that disappoints me? That's a good question to ask myself. Like, what am I, what am I holding on to? What am I, like, putting my ladder up against, climbing up this building, and I get up there, and I'm like, this is the wrong building. This is not where I wanted to go. And I just, like, spent a lot of time and energy and effort, and I'm, and I'm looking around, I'm like, there are way cooler, bigger buildings. And, you know, as we live that life of, like, man, to live like they did, the early church, live like many people do, um, that are just, like, with con contentment, with godliness is great gain, Paul said. Man, contentment. I mean, how many people, what, we, what our country calls the American dream, how many people are going after things that they're going towards the wrong building. They're, they're, I mean, some of the ladders are, I mean, I want to make a million dollars. And, and, you know, our country is one of the richest, and yet it's not very high up in the, in the, if, you, if you study, if you measured the happy quotient. It really isn't. Um, and I can relate to that. Because when I'm expecting... Oh, wow. Almost like an entitlement. Entitlement is the enemy to the Christian life. And I, and sometimes I feel like it's wrapped in me like, like a disease. Like, I feel entitled to this. I feel entitled to that. And, oh, well, I have that now. You know, um, now I need something else. And, and it's, it's, it is like a disease. And it's something that, like, we need the, I need the anecdote. I need, I need that to be pulled out because, it does contradict, you know, the pages of this book. It does contradict his kingdom. And, I, and I'm not, I'm, see, I'm speaking this, I want to speak a message of hope because God doesn't condemn us. Like, he wants to bless us, 
right? Just so you know, I believe that the Bible says he gives us all things to enjoy, but then he talks about to the rich, make sure you're trusting God. So I, I don't care. We're the, we're, you know, I don't care how blessed, how prosperous you and I are. It's our heart attitude that matters. I am not preaching, and the Bible does not preach that to be more, you know, have more poverty means more godliness. It's not what, that's not necessary. Because, you know, I know people that, man, if, if I have money to give to them, man, they'll do great things with it. They'll impact lives that absolutely have not a fraction of what I have. I want that. God wants that. He works through his people, right? But a big part of it is to give thanks. Um, so right now, let's stand up right now, and let's just give God thanks. And, and don't just clap. Use your words. God, I thank you for this amazing day. I thank you for my awesome friends. I thank you for people in my life that look to me and, and, and just are there with me, and, and I can just be myself with them. I thank you so much for this church that, that I've been at for so many years, and, and I have relationships here that are so amazing. And, and thank you, Lord. Thank you for the food I ate today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your, your presence. Thank you for the band that just absolutely did a great job tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I pray, Father, for all of us right now that you would work, continue to build hearts of thankfulness. Hearts of thankfulness. Because the more we have hearts of thankfulness, the more we have hearts that will enter in to the will of God and fulfill the will of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. Wow. Good job. I almost had to like shout you down like, all right, that's enough. It's enough thankfulness. <laughs> Would you quit it? Go to your room. No, I was kidding. No idea why I said that. Um, but no, seriously, like that came out of my spirit. I mean, it makes sense, right? But the more we train ourselves to be thankful, the more we tra are training ourselves to do the will of God. Is that, that's, that's good. That's, that's, the, that's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Because I'm listening to this sermon too. Amen. So number two, emotional. The key to emotional maturity is rejoice always. Boom. Rejoice always. Those cute little words up on the top. Rejoice always. Man, rejoy. You know, um, I wanted to read. Um, can we do Philippians uh, 4? Do you have? Yeah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, you know, I've read that so many times, and I'll be honest, I've tried it a bunch of times, you know, in my early Christian life, and I'm like, I'm doing it, Lord. I'm doing it. I don't really feel like a wave of your presence. I need, you know... I need an angel to come up here and sing, you know, or whatever. I need the band and, and, uh, what, or whatever it happened to be. But sometimes there needs, I mean, well, let me do this. Um, sometimes we need to do things that, that bring us joy. Um, I, I happen to be, I, I was just kind of meditating on Psalm 23 today. I don't have it in my notes. But I was thinking about Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is an amazing psalm. I love it. And just listen to the words of this. Just think about, like, what David, what was on his mind? What was on his heart? Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, you guys are good. Um, he leads me beside the, I want you guys to say, say these after me. Say green pastures. Say still waters. Say still waters real peacefully. Still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths. Say paths. Have you ever taken a walk and just gone on a beautiful path? Like, wow, this is a really... Or maybe you're creating your own path. Maybe you're like, you know what I mean? Don't break anybody's... Don't cut down anybody's shrubs. But I'm just saying, like, you're just breaking through. You go, not breaking through. Yeah, you're going around somewhere. You're like, I'm going to go this way today. I'm making a new path. Right? Like, pads are cool because they bring us places. Because, you know, I mean, I don't know about you. I, and I don't, I struggle with this sometimes because I am not, I'm, I'm trying to become more, like, present in the moment. 
because I am a thinker. I am like, well, what can I do better to make that happen? And what did I, what can I do better from you know, that, you know? Um, and, uh, but my personality, oh, someone might need to hear this. So my personality is not an excuse to not follow God's word. Okay, so, I, Lord, that's for me, but maybe for somebody else, because there was some breath on that. But my personality, oh, I'm an Enneagram 5. Oh, I'm a thinker. Oh, I'm a, listen, that's all good to get to know yourself and to get to know other people. If we're lift, lifting up the word of God, if love prevails. Right? I'm not going to put you down because you're an Enneagram, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm, you know what I mean? Like, like I, and I don't know anybody that's done that, but um, it's a good little warning. Like, and it's good for, it's good to be reminded of that. Um, man, my personality or the way I've been does not, because I don't want my past performance to indicate the future that God has for me either. So it's, they're tied together. Right? I want to be able to. I want to, he, he puts new wine in new wineskins. So we're all in a process of becoming new wineskins. Man, he's got some great, amazing, I mean, new wine, new presence of God, new encounters. And, and, and as we're on purpose, you know, and we will be way more on purpose as we just do these three simple things found in 1 Thessalonians. Like, as I'm, as I'm living a rejoiced life, when I'm living a thankful life, I want to give it away. When I'm praying, God puts people on my heart. I love people more. I, I see, you know what I mean? It's not just about me. But when I'm like, poor me, I'm stuck in my house. My dog smells. I don't even, can't even take it to the groomer. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, I'm, and it's like, poor me. And what do I really, do I really have anything to complain about? Like, really? Like, come on. Forget about it. You know, like they say in, in Jersey, forget about it. I got nothing to, they don't say that in Jersey? They, New York? Okay. <laughs> I love Pastor Vegas in the front row. She is like my amen or oh me corner. She's my oh me corner right now. <laughs> Just kidding. No, she's awesome. So, um, yay, though I walk, there's walking again. Walking, walking, man. You know what? Walking is amazing. Walking is healthy. I'm just going to say this. This might sound a little arrogant, okay? But sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm around people, and I'm like, if you tried harder in PE and you enjoyed the, the games like I did, maybe you would like some of these things, like you'd want to walk more. Like, I don't know if I'm, I don't, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, like, an overall joy, because, like, I remember PE, and I loved the new game that they had. And then there would be people next to me. This is before high school and you didn't, I didn't take PE. I just played sports. And, like, they would complain about every single game. And I'm like, really? It's fun. This is the fun class. This is PE. This is, why are you so mad? You know what I mean? Why are you so mad about having to walk around the track? It's a beautiful day. We live in SoCal, baby. Come on, you know? I know. So a little bit judgy and a little bit arrogant, but forgive me. Um, I still got a lot of benefits from the PE because walking, walking is super healthy. Walking is like connecting parts of your brain, giving energy to your brain. Any time you're doing things that, that, are, um, that cross over from one hemisphere to the other, you're really helping yourself get healthier, period, right? So even if you're like sitting there and you're walking and, and you're just like, I'm tapping my left hand on my right side or vice versa, you know, di different things, like they, it helps you. All right, it helps you. Or if you're not doing the tapping and you're just out in nature. Look at how much nature is in Psalm 23. Though, uh, although he is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But at least he didn't stay there. <laughs> I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Rod and staff, I don't know what that symbolizes, but they're cool. You prepare a table. I love this part. I got to admit, this might be a little bit carnal, all right, because I got a little bit of a 2020 body, but it's okay. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I get to eat. 
You guys don't like to eat? <laughs> like, well, I mean, God wants to, I mean, maybe not just physical food, but he wants to give us the desires of our heart. And sometimes the desire of my heart is to drink my coffee in the morning. Like, I mean, just to enjoy, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Right? And just like, man, that, if that helps me connect. You know, Pastor Drew taught me this. He's like, when I was struggling with getting up early, he says, get something that you enjoy. He knows I like, I'm a foodie. So get the, a really cool muffin and your nice coffee and have that right away. There's a practical uh, suggestion for you. If you struggle with fill in the blank, reward yourself. It's not sinful to eat a muffin and, you know, have coffee. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so follow your doctor's advice. But I'm just saying, like, if that, if that helps me do what I really want to be doing, which is spending time with God, then sometimes we get hard on, sometimes I get hard on myself. And like maybe I need to like, I'm just making I statements, but they can also be we statements if the, if it, if the shoe fits. But um, anyway, you get what I'm saying. So just enjoy the process and, and have some fun with it. Um, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I mean, this is just great. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house. Everyone say house. Man, welcome home. God's house is amazing. All right, and then last but not least, the key to spiritual vitality is pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Um, I want to just share briefly um, just some things that, um, a little model that I learned in Bible college from the Lord's Prayer. Um, uh, let's, go, let's go through Matthew 6, 9. And so it starts off, um, and it says, Our Father, who was in heaven, um, yeah, back up one. I don't because like, this is New King James, right? Which, that's, uh, which is awesome. In this manner, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thank you. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I learned it in King James, so it, it's still the Bible. So, uh, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so all of that, that first part, is all about praising God. And it's a good little model for when we enter his presence, when we start to pray. Start with praise. Because who are we talking to? Remind, uh, remind yourself who he is. God, you're the God who loves me. You're the God who cares. You're the God who blessed me with this. And the thankfulness that we just talked about, like you could feel the energy. And we don't always start with that energy. Like there's a corporate energy here. Let's get practical here. Sometimes we just, that's why honestly with the rejoice, sometimes like Smith Wigglesworth used to get up and he would just start dancing. He would just start dancing. He did not feel nothing. But it got his body, well, I was, I don't, I don't know, I heard that it, he didn't feel anything because I can't talk to him now, he's with Jesus. But, like, so I used to do that, and when I'm like, oh, energy, my body needs to get, sometimes maybe you need to do some jumping jacks. Maybe you need to jump up and down a little bit and get your body involved. That is part of rejoicing. That can be, if that's, if that's the part that helps you, at, you know, there's a saying we used to have in Bible college, you start in the flesh and you end in the spirit. And we used to tell people that weren't like, we'd be really praising God and rejoicing. Maybe we're running, you know, whatever. And then we're trying to follow the Holy Spirit. We're not trying to be seen or fleshly. But sometimes people that struggle to enter in, and, and I know Pastor Drew has told us, like, sometimes you're not, if you're not doing what everybody else is doing, everyone else is praising God, and you're not, then fill it. guess who's missing God in that moment? You're not being more spiritual because, well, I'm stoic before the Lord right now. That's not, no, you need to relax. You need to release your reputation. You need to, pray, you need to get, praise God because he's worthy. And trust me, you will be happy you did. I remember I used to tell some of the youth, like, they'd say, why do you dance in the front of the church? And I used to remember I had that gold-colored pumpkin, you know, Rick Castro calls it a pumpkin suit. And, uh, and I, I wasn't trying to be seen. I'm not trying to be no, like, I just want, I just like praising God, and I like being there. I just, you know what I'm saying? Doing it, God told me to go to the front. You know what I mean? I already blocked everybody's view with my height, so I'm not, you know, it's over. It doesn't matter anymore. Just get up to the front. 
But I'm just praising God. And anyway, you will be happy. You will be happy. So the first part is giving him praise. The next part is your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. The second part it really covers for a while our relationship with him, our dependence on him. You'll see it in this. Verse 12, uh, and forgive us our debts. Man, we need, I, we need forgiveness, and, we, and forgiving others is not a, a, is not a uh, suggestion. That's a requirement if we're going to walk with God. Verse 13, so we're getting this out with God. What, what do we need to work through? What's going on? What, where's my heart stuck? Where's my attitude struggling? And do not lead us into temptation. And then it's our position uh, 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 when it comes to the enemy. All right? And when it comes to, like, the enemy is under my feet. Or do I feel like he's over me? You know what I mean? I, I need to remind myself that do not leave me in temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the king. So we have to remind ourselves that he's under our feet. That he is, he is the head over all things, and he has placed us above in, in Christ, above, above all the principalities and powers and dominions and mights, all that. Ephesians, like they did at the, at the skit a few weeks ago. And then lastly, we just want to enjoy his presence, and there's no better way to enjoy his presence. As the band can come on up, um, there's no better way to enjoy his presence than to just worship him. And, uh, I mean, it's just honoring him as truth. Um, to, you're, for yours is the kingdom, because guess what? His is the kingdom. No matter what, there is no ministries, there's no, uh, you know, somebody did a miracle, or, you know, somebody got somebody saved. Man, it's all his kingdom. It's all, even Jesus, all that Jesus has done and is doing and will do, all he's going to do is everything that he's done, he's going to take the kingdom and he's going to pass it to the Father. He is the head of the church, but the Father is the beginning and he's the end all. And, 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 and even us, all we do is all we can, the best we can do is just take, take our crowns and cast them before. And all, it's all we're going to want to do. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a performance thing. It's just like, I just want to be with you. And it's true that you have absolutely done all this in my life. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can we do burning ones? I've heard that's a really good song. And then um, Isaiah, man, I just died one more verse. And I love the Bible, so I'm just going to say it. Therefore, with joy, you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. With joy. Hallelujah. You will draw water. Everyone say water. <laughs> draw water. I almost missed a step. You will draw water from the wells of salvation. Father, we just want more of your presence. We love you. You are so amazing. I thank you, Lord. Um, you know, there may be some cobwebs in other people's minds like there are mine, that there have been in mine, and, and they need things need to be broken off and limits need to be changed, and we need to be released into a new destiny. There, it's all the things that you have planned for us anyway. We're not trying to be God or take over. No, you you put eternity in our hearts. The, uh, the, all we can never, all we want is just your full will. And, and I just pray over the church. I pray over myself. I pray over this church. I pray over your capital C church, that we would just move forward in the fullness of your spirit. And that has to do with breaking off stuff. Let there be things broken off. And, that, and, and I, don't, I can't think of a better way to do that than in praise exalting your name for who you are in worship in giving our full hearts to you completely as we are coming to you and with any brokenness with any sin with any heart attitude that's not right and just saying god i don't want that i trade that in for your best for my life and i just pray father for just a new and a refreshing. You promised us, Lord, that as we turn from our old ways, then times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And there is nothing like that. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. your presence take wonder of you here inside your glory we give our 
lives fully to you. And we
consumed by you and we cry holy holy are you we cry like that that uh, bridge says that um, that you your desires we want your desires you promise to work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure can we do that part can we do that bridge is it the bridge that's uh let your love be like a fire oh okay i interrupted it let's go Let this love be like a fire, let our lives be like a flame, fill our souls with your desire, let our passion bring you fame. Let this love be like a fire, let our lives be like a flame, fill our souls with your desire, let our passion bring you fame. Hallelujah, our 
God reigns, our God reigns, and hallelujah, and hallelujah, and our God reigns, our God reigns, and hallelujah, and hallelujah.
Kingdom come, your will be done here as in heaven. Spirit of God, join us. We need your presence. thing I had in my heart, um, man, I just want to prophesy a new, for not that God does anything the same the second time, but the Jesus movement of the 60s and 70s was um, it's something worth studying, and um, it was just a group of people, and it started in Southern California. You know, I'm just going to say, I am, I've had enough of people saying that California is, you know, going with the devil, or, or God's not doing nothing in California. You know, we're here because God's called us to be here. Amen. I hope that's why you're here. And where God is, he's moving. And um, and, and so I just want to pray that. Just agree with me, Father. We just, we just prophesy however you want to do it. Just a new Jesus movement of people who are sold out in purity, sold out in, in passion, sold out in, 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 in fulfilling your purpose, Lord. And just absolutely... Um, it's not a performance thing. It's just a love thing. You're so good in 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 in, in our lives, and we, and I know there's people who are just sold out for you. And we just come out of agreement with, I need this and I need that to be happy. You know what we need? We need you. We need to be sold out to you. We don't just need to have that bumper sticker. I just need to know that you are enough. You're more than enough. And 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 just continue. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And I, you will learn the truth and the truth will make you free. So we just come into agreement that we know you've been doing stuff and we know that it's not going to be one group, one denomination, one church, but we just want to be in the center of what you're doing, Lord. We just want to be with you. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming tonight. 
Thanks for coming. Stan, a couple minutes over, but it's worth it. Amen. Uh, God is good. And uh, thank you, band. Once again, you guys rock my socks off. <laughs> Amen. Um, we'll hope to see you guys at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, and we love you all. You are what? You are dismissed. <laughs>